Hi, I'm Todd Martin. Um, last time that I talked to you guys, I was giving you tips on starting your reining horse or starting your horse on your turnarounds or your spins. Um, we had referred to teaching your horse to step deep with its right foot and clearing its, its right foot so that you can step over better with its left leg. And remembering that you keep forward motion into it all the time. As we gradually increase, and it's no more different than to actually taking your horse and teaching him to turn. You're going to teach your horse to pick up and move over, and it's important that you lift because if you, if you lift, you're actually lightening their front end and allow them to step around. That's what gets these horses to be able to get on their rear end more. It's not pulling them to go backwards. It's lifting to elevate the shoulders and create more impulsion driving forward. If you'll notice, whenever I'm spinning my horse or I'm starting to, I'm actually pushing my pelvic bone forward. The same way as I would ask for him to drive into his spin. I'm pushing and asking him to lift up with his shoulders and get down on his rear end. Once you've obtained having at least a horse that can pick up, step over, put him back down, pick up, step over, and put him back down, you're going to build it up into a series of keeping him in it until he pivots all the way halfway around or one revolution, but don't forget to continue with the forward motion. It's very important that you maintain forward motion in these horses. If not, if I continually start to teach him, or I've got my horse starting to spin, but I want him to advance a little bit further, and I want to do it like a show pin, and I pull on him and then start and then kick him, I'm taking forward motion away first and then asking for him to go. So it's really important that I continue forward motion. If not, they're going to get rocked back. They'll start to interfere with their legs. The reason why they interfere with their legs, they're getting stepping back too far. They've lost forward motion, and forward's no longer there. The conflict of where I place my foot starts to happen. This is where we get horses that bounce, that bounce and, and kind of skip through their spins instead of crossing over and having a cadence. Remember, that first part is very important that we continue with that cadence until that rhythm builds. Once I have that rhythm built, then I can go from walking into a spin. If I want to add speed, I'll start to trot him into a spin, ask more forward motion, sit back, ask him to come around, and then ask him to leave it again. Build it up to a trot, sit back, bring him back in, pick up, push, and then drive him forward again. At the same time, I'm asking him to speed up, but I'm not asking him to lose his forward motion. And you'll notice once again, I go back to sitting back on my haunches. Whenever I want him to move forward, I push up. When I want him to sit back, he sits back when I sit back. I help him pick up and move over. Um, when horses start getting too confused, it's usually because we've, we're training ourselves and not necessarily training our horses. Most non-pros, when they first get their horse, it's really fun. It's like a carnival ride. I want to spin them, I want to spin them, I want to spin them. And I want to practice because I'm going in the show pen, I stop, and then I pick up, I spin, and I stop. What happens after the maneuver leaks back into your maneuver because horses are going to one-up you. They're going to try and do one better for you. If that was good, I'll give you a little bit more. Well, if you can use that to your benefit or to your disadvantage. I use it to my advantage. If I know that what happens afterwards is going to leak back into my new maneuver, then I'm going to use what happens after as something that I want to fall back into my maneuver. So if teaching him to spin at the end of the maneuver, I want him to keep forward motion, then I'm going to continue walking him forward rather than stopping him because what comes after stopping is backing up. If I've spun him and I stop him, what is this? This is pull. The next thing that happens after pull is backing up. So if I spin him, start him off standing still, and spin him, and then pull him to stop, I'm continually taking that forward motion out. So we got to make sure that when we're training on our horses and we're working our horses, that there is a difference between showing and difference between training and maintaining what we have. That what happens afterwards leaks back in. Um, and don't forget that it's much more important to start off with having the cadence and continuing forward motion and don't let them lose that shoulder. The nose heading that direction is nowhere, nowhere near as important as that shoulder moving over. That shoulder is where that step comes from. Um, if you have any more questions or need, uh, want more information about reining and, and uh, tips, go to toddmartin.net and uh, have fun spinning.